We pride ourselves here at gemstones.com for having a vast and unique internal collection of gemstones. But there's one collection that we just can't help but envy, and it belongs to the Smithsonian Institute. So grab your tweezers and loop as we take a look at some of the most interesting gems from one of the most famous mineral collections in the world. The Smithsonian's Gem and Mineral Collection at the National Museum of Natural History consists of approximately 350,000 mineral specimens and 10,000 gems, making it one of the largest of its kind in the world. Along with the items we're about to highlight, you may remember that it also houses the world-famous Hope Diamond. It's got its own video, so if you want to watch that, click here. Let's start with the Dom Pedro Aquamarine. It was cut from an enormous aquamarine crystal found in the Minas Gerais region of Brazil, and it's probably one of the few gems in the world that can share a room with the Hope Diamond. The stone was found in the late 1980s. It's quite large, but in its original state, it measured three feet long and weighed nearly 100 pounds. Unfortunately, it was dropped by the prospectors who found it, and it broke into three pieces. Two pieces were sold by the mine owner to be cut into stones for jewelry, and the largest piece was named the Dom Pedro after the first emperor of Brazil. The crystal ended up in the workshop of a German gem artist named Bernd Munsteiner, who was interested at the time in using gems as a sculptural medium rather than just for jewelry. The Dom Pedro presented both a challenge and a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Munsteiner studied the crystal for four months before settling on a design he called the Ondas Maritamas, Waves of the Sea. After six months of cutting and fastening, the finished sculpture emerged. This one-of-a-kind piece is incalculable, but it may have been fasted into jewelry if it weren't for American gem collectors Mitchell and Bland, who acquired it in 1999 to prevent that from happening. The pair donated it to the Smithsonian in 2011, where it stands tall to this day. Next up must be one of the reddest gems we've ever seen, the Carmen Lucia Ruby. At 23.10 carats, the Carmen Lucia Ruby is the largest faceted ruby in the National Gem Collection and one of the finest faceted Burmese rubies in the world. Burmese rubies, according to some, have the finest color, red to slightly purplish red and medium dark in tone, which is historically referred to as pigeon's blood red. Plus, a Burmese ruby exceeding more than 20 carats is particularly rare. It's important to note the history of the romance and the ruby, though. The oval-shaped stone was mined in the 1930s in the Mogok region of Burma, also known as Myanmar, home to some of the world's finest rubies and sapphires. Its namesake, Carmen Lucia Buck, was a collector of fine jewels. She was also a philanthropist dedicated to medical research, the elderly, and children in her home country of Brazil. When the stone hit the market, Carmen Lucia was fighting cancer and hoped to celebrate her recovery by purchasing the stone. Sadly, it was not meant to be. She lost her battle the next year. In 2004, this gorgeous Burmese ruby was donated to the Smithsonian by Carmen Lucia's husband, Dr. Peter Buck, in honor of his late wife, adding another level of beauty to an already captivating piece. Now, on to another piece born out of love, the Marie Louise diadem. What's a diadem, you ask? I didn't know until I watched Harry Potter, but a diadem is a jeweled crown or a headband worn as a symbol of sovereignty. This diadem, if you haven't already guessed, was worn and named after the Empress Marie Louise on the occasion of her marriage to THE Napoleon Bonaparte. Here's the kicker. Originally, the diadem was set with emeralds, but they were replaced in the 1950s with fine turquoise. Huh? I mean, I love turquoise as much as the next guy, but seriously? I mean, I guess some turquoise can command a small premium, but still. Anyways, if you want to know the exact quality of the emeralds in the original crown, look no further than the Louvre. The original diadem was made by Etienne Nitto of Paris. It was one piece of a set that also included a necklace, earrings, and comb, all in emeralds, diamonds, silver, and gold. The necklace and the earrings still reside in the Louvre today. The comb, disassembled. Tragic. The diadem was eventually acquired by Van Cleef & Arpels, a French luxury company, and somewhere between May of 1954 to June of 1956, they removed the emeralds from the diadem and sold them individually in pieces of jewelry. 
then mounted the turquoise into the diadem. Again, <laughs> tragic. It was displayed in the Louvre Museum in Paris along with the necklace, earrings, and comb as part of a special exhibition honoring Empress Marie Louise. Eventually, the diadem was purchased and donated to the Smithsonian in 1971. The diadem is an elaborate design of scrolls, palmettes, and medallions, and contains 79 Persian turquoise stones totaling about 540 carats and 1,006 old mine-cut diamonds totaling 700 carats and is set in silver and gold. Lastly, this isn't something I'd consider a gem specimen per se, but it's a worthy treasure all the same. It's the gold Monopoly board. Yes, the board game that has been tearing families and friend groups apart since the early 1900s. The Smithsonian has a 23 karat gold board that's adorned with gemstones designating each set of properties. 18 karat yellow gold pieces, including dye, houses, and hotels, are embellished with diamonds, rubies, and sapphires. The chance and community chest cards are also made of gold. In all, there are 165 gemstones and the set weighs 51.21 carats, bringing its value to around, well, more than your whole life, or roughly $2 million. The die alone are valued at $10,000 with 42 diamonds for dots. It was created by San Franciscan jeweler Sidney Mobel, who designed the set in 1988 for London's World Monopoly Tournament. It's considered the world's most expensive Monopoly set and made its way to the Smithsonian's Mineral Sciences Collection in October of 2002. Jeffrey Post, the Smithsonian's curator of gems and minerals, says, it's not quite typical of what we normally think of taking for the mineral sciences collection at the museum, but it's a different way to think about gems, and if the board makes visitors smile, then that's a success. We think so too. Well, that's another one in the books, but tell me what other treasures of the Smithsonian do you want to know more about? Let me know down in the comments, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Lastly, head on over to gemstones.com where you can learn more about aquamarine, rubies, and any other gemstones you're curious about. Thanks for watching.